Hi, 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 hi. Uh, well, your questions from Dhamma Sangha are really better. And let's try <clears throat> from the pool of questions. Wow. Why do Vajrayana Master get to be lay people? For example, marriage, eat meat, do this, that. But in Sri Chamani in Buddha's time, it was not encouraged. Very good questions. Um, why Vajrayana Master get to be lay people? It's not Vajrayana master yet to be lay people actually, right? Uh, so the teaching of Vajrayana is generally uh, so-called yeah, very advanced as mentioned in the text itself. It has the same goal as with my other teachings or Taribada, but, but without much of confusions and difficulties, with so much of a skillful means, and uh, for those who have the wisdom to understand, Vajrayana is the best uh, way of practicing the Dharma. Uh, so, as a Vajrayana practitioner, it is good if you can be a stay as a monk and with ordination and uh, but at the same time uh, it allows to be a Vajrayana follower and to also live your normal life and to pursue the spiritual path. So it's very simple. In the Vajrayana, Tharaivada and Mahayana, that one of the elements of training the mind is through the discipline of Vidya. Do's and don'ts are very strong, which was very helpful. When it comes to Vajrayana, as long as you have the wisdom, if you have ultimate objective of the Dharma path correct, do's and don'ts are not that so called important as long as you have a whistle or a skillful means to um, pursue the path through you know, methods and through different approach to the Dharma path. Uh, but the end result has to be the same and you should, you should be able to uh, gain a proper result and be able to achieve so called freedom or nirvana. So, uh, in this regard, um, the f uh, first uh, uh, the answer to the question is uh, it doesn't say as a Vajrayana master you can marry, you can have business, you can da 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 you know? but some of the teacher has the wisdom and ability and advantage of handling all those mundane human affairs and see wisdoms in every life or aspect of their life and they, they they have such a quality of a spiritual that touch by liberation by touching, liberation by hearing, liberation by seeing. So, <clears throat> but it's a very contradictory, controversial kind of uh, subject. You know, uh, if today's world, if you ask me, is there any teacher who are really qualified, Vajrayana master? who can be so ordinary and uh, yet, you know, uh, being a very divine. Maybe there are a few, you know, uh, but it's very, very rare, very rare, you know. But I can't say no, because there may be a few still available like that. And the, uh, I'm nobody to judge who is the genuine correct one and who is not you know so to tell you the truth uh, there are 
fake teachers who are pretend to be this Vajrayana skillful means teacher by not having the quality, you know, and, but continuing everything as ordinary. And this is sad. But there are some teachers who are genuinely divine yet so ordinary and these are beautiful right so this teachings when you say this idea of allowing Vajrayana master to be like a lay people are the one who are very divine and everything in their life is teachings and become meaningful so it doesn't matter if they is married eat meat do business they don't they are not Lacking the bodhicitta, the loving kindness. As I was saying, wherever they touch, wherever they do, it just liberate and it just help them. Even though for enlightened beings like ourselves, whom we view as a very ordinary, but it's not an ordinary, it's an act of bodhisattva. But I'm not saying all the teachers are like that, so I have to be careful. <clears throat> and why uh, uh, Buddha time, it was not encouraged. Buddha time, Vajrayana was also not taught openly. You know, it was very much towards the end of the life. Buddha turned the wheel of the Dharma, the turning of the wheel of the Dharma about the Buddha nature. So that time Buddha explained about it. And Buddha said, I will return after you know, a certain year to turn the wheel of the Dharma again. So we are referring to all the Vajrayana gurus, such as Mamasambhava and all the <coughs> Great master is and so on, you know. <coughs> so, uh, you're right. Uh, during Gautama Buddha, uh, it was not encouraged, it was not introduced openly, you know. It was, so this is why, you know. But doesn't mean that Buddha did not give blessing for Vajrayana teachings. And uh, so, Vajrayana was introduced and taught by Buddha. Very secretly, very, very superficial, uh, not superficially, and a very minimal. So, for example, if you have to recognize what was the teaching that Buddha talked about, the subject of Vajrayana. To be very straightforward, Buddha gave the introduction on Buddha nature. The third turning of the world world, the Buddha nature, Gautama Buddha said, we all have this nature of Buddha in us. That was the same subject of Vajrayana he discussed. And all the teaching of the Vajrayana today, the Tantra teaching, is to help the Buddha nature in us. That's why it's such a subject as great perfection in new tradition, is to help the Buddha nature Mahamudra to help the Buddha nature as well as ah, even in the Chinese setting of Mahayana of you know, some of the Vajrayana practice of the Chinese tradition is to help the Buddha nature so that introduction of Buddha nature is uh, the most uh, so called Powerful subject of tantric teachings of Vajrayana, which was firstly uh, in the first place it was taught by Gautama himself, and later in, improved uh, 